Alright, hi there. Today we're going to talk about the Studio 2 drone. This is a flight review. Welcome to Ad Shot. If you're joining us again, we appreciate you viewing. Thank you so much. All videos and music are made from scratch. Today we're going to go into the Skidio 2 Drone Follow Me Mode. We will be following a Kawasaki Mule down to the depths of the canyons. Here we go. So we had a quick launch. Everything was set up. It launched quick. I grabbed my gear. I jumped in the rig. And uh, we're heading down the uh, canyon right now. This is going to be a test to just see how things go down the hill. Uh, I want to try and get some angles further back. I'm going to attempt to push the correct button and uh, push this thing back as I'm doing here. And I think uh, hopefully we get good results or at least learn something. We're doing some awesome filming here on the edge of the world, heading down into a canyon. Just a little side clip here to show you some fun where I intended to uh, film some regular video, but instead it went to uh, time warp. Anyway, the drone is uh, tracking us now from the front right. It's at a very close distance. I'm using my phone. Everything seems to be good. On my last flight, I did have some problems with some lagging on the phone, where it was showing an image of me about a minute before, two minutes before, and it never caught up with itself. This time, I seem to have no problems with my phone. Everything's working good. Heading down the mountain here. So what I really wanted to do is get some more wide shots. Zoom out, show the world, uh, you know, where we were. And, uh, Basically, I tried to do that a lot, so at this point, I'm, I'm going to zoom out and uh, things start happening here with uh, old Skidio 2. So at this point, the drone's doing good. It's following us well. It's very close up. I try to, you know, back it out now. I want to get a better angle of the sky. I want everything to look good. Uh, very cinematic. I'm trying to go for it. All of a sudden, the drone loses, loses visual of us. It, it starts getting lost. It's hanging out by the trees. It's shuddering. It's shimmering. It, it doesn't know what to do. It lost us behind the tree. It is still connected to us with a GPS signal. Uh, Skidio claims that the unshakable GPS tracking means Skidio 2 will stay with you, even if it can't see you. So what's happening is it lost me visually, but it just was able to catch me right there, as you saw. I didn't have to do very much for it to do that. It happens a lot. When you are driving in any vehicle, it loses signal all the time. I feel like I'm constantly checking my phone and the beacon together, and, and you know, it's, it's constantly jumping out of signal, coming back in, and almost the worry is what makes it harder to fly. Uh, but I'll get back more on that later. But however, it still is doing what it's supposed to. It's not running into trees. It's following us how I told it to. It's, it's back on track. Okay, so here we go. Descending down some switchbacks here. We're just going at a slow pace right now. The mule does not uh, exceed uh, uh, usually more than 13 miles per hour. Uh, but here we are heading down, probably doing about four. And uh, it's fun. We're getting some good uh, visuals here. You can see that at this point, I'm going to probably swing the camera around and try and get a different view uh, off to the right. And it does, it's very responsive. One thing I'm having a little bit of trouble with is it feels like some of the arrows are backwards on the beacon, but I'll get used to it, I'm sure. Uh, the more I fly, uh, the more I'll know. And here we are. I'm telling the camera to just take in a beautiful sight being very cinematic about it, showing the switchbacks. Very easy to get cinematic shots here. This is just really what you're, you're going for. You, you could go out and film for 15, 20 minutes and only come out with about 13 seconds of excellent video, but that's what it's all about. So you can see as we're 
riding down the canyon. The uh, Skidio is following us, keeping us in an awesome frame of view. Just off to the right there. It doesn't always seem to want to have to center us. It, it seems to always keep us in, in this really great frame set. Here we go as we're descending through these trees. The Skidio is still trying to keep up. Now uh, it's, it's running into some problems here. You can see it's, it's trying to find a way out of here and it's getting real close to branches. There it got, it, okay, it went through, got through. But it appears that it's not tracking us. This is one of the big problems. Once the GPS uh, keeps the signal, but it stays with you, but it can't see you. And so it's just kind of hovering and keeping up. But since we're going downhill, I believe it's having a lot of trouble understanding this. And then, you know, getting that camera to just tilt down and find us again. So in this scenario, I basically thought that it was stuck. So we stopped. And I think that's one of the big problems is that you don't want to stop when you're doing these motion things. You gotta actually have some kind of confidence that this drone is not gonna hit any branches. I mean, you're gonna see here, I'm gonna show, as I'm showing a little uh, clip right here of just us going down the hill again. But you can see that the drone is stuck. It's sitting here, it's waiting for commands. It's, you know, I, I'm looking at my phone, I'm looking at the beacon and uh, I'm trying everything I can, and I'm not figuring out why it's not responding to me. I can't adjust the camera angle. So basically what you have to do in these situations where it loses you is you have to kill the shot. You have to kill the motion track shot, the little red X in the top right. Once you do that, you're good. You can then tilt the camera back on you, reacquire, and then you're good. Okay, but some reason it lost me again. We were going downhill, it just totally lost me again. It has troubles going downhills for some reason, Probably because I was panned out. Maybe if it was right behind me, it would have kept me visually in there. Again, I had to pan the camera down, acquire my location. Here we go. Another cool just downhill shot. So now we're back on track. So the drone is staying close. It's weaving in and out of trees. This area, we have a little bit more sky to work with, which is always great for this action camera. If if you have open skies, you're, you're pretty much in the best environment. However, these, these shots where these drones travel through trees and branches and get around things to find you, it is literally amazing. I am blown away by it. Uh, I still have so much testing to do. So here we are descending the mountain. And I'm trying to get more zoom out shots more shots where I just back out and show more of the scenery and less of the vehicle. And as we're going down the hill here, everything's looking good. Beautiful mountainside descending into the deep canyon. And at this point, the drone is starting to seem a bit confused. It's raised up its camera again. It's lost us, lost us visually. And because we're going downhill, it is not going to reacquire us without using the GPS tracking based on elevation. I'm not sure if it's judging our elevation. I'm pretty sure it's it. it is because you can see it does start to go downhill with us. We're down at the bottom right. It just went over that tree. It's definitely using its opt optical avoidance systems at all times. So that is a great thing. So we just continue going. That's what you kind of have to do is continue going. This thing will keep up to, with you while avoiding obstacles. So it's sensing that we're turning and changing directions. You can see that the drone has done the same thing, but it has not locked onto us visually. It is not lowering its camera down to reacquire us. So here it goes. It's, it's going to start trying to follow us with GPS only, no visual sight. It's getting so close to tree branches it has no idea what to do however it knows do not hit whatever is in front of me I can't believe it just weaved through those trees just there it's just unbelievable I mean it's you're looking back and it's it's missing for a second you don't know what's going on all of a sudden it reappears 
sometimes, like 15 seconds later, you're like, oh, there it is. Okay, it's, it's still with us. All right. Now here is where I killed the motion track. Top right, hit the red X. Disable motion track. Use my camera to lower the angle on the screen of my phone. Reacquire, reacquire the Kawasaki Mule, and then we're off again. So I've found a way to quickly reacquire, which I think a lot of people are gonna have this issue right off the bat. This is why I really wanted to get this out there. It's gotta be known. This thing would basically just follow you blindly down the mountain, filming the horizon the entire time because it's stuck with you, unshakable GPS. However, you know, it's never gonna reacquire the visual aspect of you going downhill unless you manually, uh, you know, engage with it. So I, it's back on me, everything's good. We're heading down this rocky section here. This is uh, usually a challenge for any vehicle. Um, gotta take it slow. I have it uh, told to be right in front of us. And the best part about when it's right in front of you, it is scanning behind itself with these 200 degree angle cameras, all six of them, three on top, three on the bottom. It's looking behind itself. It's mapping the environment. I'm in a steep canyon here with trees and branches on both sides. And it, it doesn't have much to go, but it knows my direction of travel. It's keeping me in the frame. And it, as long as I keep it close, it seems like it does real well tracking you downhill. So as we come on down, you'll just definitely see it's doing good. It's I, I always want to get it further back, though. I really want to take in more of the scenery around us because these close-up shots can, they're great, but you know, you really want to see what's around you and you want to take it in like it's cinematic vision. So as we come down here, we're getting down towards the bottom of the hill and Basically at this point, since the drone lost me at least three times coming down, I just wanted to leave the, the drone in front of me, let it continue capturing us. It was doing real well at close proximity. As you can see here, I'm backing out a little bit, a little fun downhill here where my GoPro uh, flopped over on its side and I've been able to uh, rotate the video so that you can See that amazing footage? So this whole region was wiped out by a fire about six years ago, and it's on a steady regrowth, and uh, we'll come back. If you're noticing a lot of the dead trees around. So we're coming to the bottom here, trying to find a good LZ. You know, having a good place to land is important because you never know if your drone's going to be responsive for you in that area. And you may have to run down a hillside just to try and catch the drone with your hand. One thing about this drone, I feel now confident I can catch this thing with my hand. I mean, I... So here we go. I'm just trying to maneuver the drone just slightly so I can get a good catch. That's excellent. All right. We're back and we're back on the way up let's get you the, the footage here on the way up definitely a difference big difference between coming down and going up and this drone became my best friend on uphill travel let me tell you so here we go first thing off the bat after a good dip in the river I had to re-evaluate how to fly the drone it uh, was nerve-wracking coming down that hill. It was... I didn't know what to do at times, but now I'm getting better on each flight. So here I go. This thing is lost already. We're not even 100 feet away, and the thing's lost us. I'm looking at the phone, looking at the beacon. It's lost. But it's keeping up with us via GPS. It is kissing these branches on this tree, finding a way through, finding a way around constantly. While I'm telling it to be far back, I want cinematic angles now. As you can see, I'm taking it all in. And here we go, it's just reacquired me, and here it comes. All the way in, back to a comfortable angle. The 
it definitely has a certain threshold. When you tell it to be far away like I'm doing right now, it has a certain distance it likes and it will maintain that threshold. Uh, eventually it'll have to come back closer. And so right now it's mapping its environment here. There are dead tree branches as you can see all around. This thing is definitely seeing everything. We're not going very fast so it doesn't have to calculate these these uh, obstacle avoidance issues uh, very quickly. But uh, here's that rocky section from before. We're just traveling up at a slow rate of speed. I'm zoomed out. I believe I'm zoomed out to the furthest. I was definitely doing some practicing, wanting to see some video footage from further back to take in the landscape. And this is my kind of footage. This is the stuff that I just want to have. I want to have two or three seconds of something like this to lace into a video or you know, five seconds of something over here. And you know what? You will capture those moments with this drone. It's not gonna be 20 minutes of footage that is just golden, all usable. You're gonna have to cut it down. Here we go, just dodging the tree branches, noticing that I'm turning slightly, maintaining itself behind me. Like I've said before, there's kind of like a radial circle around the image it's following. And you can tell this drone to be anywhere on the dial. You know, you want it at 3 o'clock, you put it at 3 o'clock. You want it at 12 o'clock, 12 o'clock. Okay, here it goes. It's trying, this is a, a weird scenario here where I was nervous. And this thing jumped around this tree because I'm supposed to be far back. So it jumped way far away from me and stuck itself between these two trees. And then it flew over that tree with a, yeah, an inch to spare. And then finally, it's just like, okay, keep going. I wasn't sure if it lost me there, like it, and it was just staying on me, or if it still had me visually, but it was trying to maintain distance, and I liked it. It maintained different distance, and it had no trouble reacquiring me. So up the hills, since I'm continuing to climb, this drone had no problem visually keeping up with me. Coming down the hills, you go out of the frame, the drone's lost you, and it just hovers and keeps up with you via GPS. So this is the footage you want. You want footage that's going to keep up with you, and I recommend that if you are doing some amazing shots and you want as much footage as you can get out of this camera, that you head uphill. Just saying. Look at this, loving it. Just spinning around. This terrain is so crazy. It doesn't look like much, but we've always said that, you know, riders should be somewhat advanced riding out here. You're just on the edge of the world. I think a total elevation drop in this area is 800 feet from top to bottom. Here we go. I'm just basically directing. I'm directing my mini movie while riding shotgun in my neighbor's mule. And it lost us for a second. Okay, so it definitely lost us there. It's turning though because it knows we're moving somewhere. It's turning. It still hasn't found us yet. But it's, it's flying with us with GPS. Will it acquire us? I think it's still trying. Yes, I'm telling it to get on the other side of me, and it definitely reacquired there. And so at some point, my neighbor didn't want to continue stopping the vehicle every two seconds uh, we, and waiting for the drone. That's the worst thing to do anyway, and I can get more into that in another video. But really, my neighbor was just like, keep going, you know, go faster. So we did. We just kept on going, you know, accelerate. It's going to find us. It's going to keep up especially uphill, I'm noticing how great this was. There it is, reacquire, right there. You can always tell when it kind of loses you for a second, and then it reacquires, and you, you see it here, dodging these trees, going around us. I'm still at a further back elevation, but it is staying close because it knows that we know the route through, I believe. Told it to be in front right there. Hey, nice and close. Swing it around to the right. I mean, the things you can do with this, when you get good with the beacon and you start controlling this thing and you're using your phone to keep you in some sort of field of view and know what's going on, uh, this thing is a powerful tool. And so this is one of the further back settings following us a t up a tight road. And what I like is that it's still following up these, these switchbacks. There is times though I want to be zoomed out and, and maybe watching us from an upwards angle going up all the switchbacks, but that's a different setting and I'll probably have to get into those later. But I am definitely working on the following me mode and it's following us great up the hill. I'm very excited about this. Whoa. 
So the mind of its own going over a tree right there. Love it. Here we go. Definitely I'm doing my zoom out and with open sky this thing is loving the zoom outs. I think when it senses that the sky is clear it will give you all it can. And I believe this is part of that new update that came out. And I'm just going to let you guys watch this cinematic part here. This is just, this is basically what you get this thing for. You, know, you want to share this with all your friends and family when you go and do something amazing. You just want to show them a few seconds of glory. <laughs> saw a little bit of the uh, propeller come into the frame and uh, that was a hard angled stop on the drone so it, the camera had no chance on that one. Here we go coming in. This has been a great ride today and the drone performed excellent uphill. Look at this amazing zoom out. We don't know what it did but it tried to get around these buildings for sure while keeping us in the frame. As I put a little finish here on what this looks like for us uh, coming up the hill and time warp see that the drone is just hovering away while we drove into the garage and parked the vehicle. As I ran out and I'm signaling and I'm warning the neighbors that the ceiling height is turned off and the floor height. And here it comes. And I'm trying to get it to come to me. Come closer little baby. Follow me. Follow me. My neighbor's getting out of the way. My heart is pounding and racing. It's the most stressful thing in the world, but here it comes, a safe place to land, easily brought in, and you know what, a safe landing. Hey, let me know what you think in the comments below. There's more to come. Please subscribe to this channel. Thanks for watching.